Hey guys, welcome back. So it's Felicia and Rowena. Sometimes large pores and acne isn't because of something you've done or something you didn't do. Some people are just more prone to it than others. So instead of blaming yourself for something you essentially have zero control over, what you can do is to make sure you're not doing things that are potentially making your pores bigger and your breakouts even worse. So this video is a continuation of our pore care series. We made one previous one on seven things to not do for proper pore care. Mm. And today we're giving you a brand new point for pore care and breakouts. Yeah. I don't know about you, but I'm definitely <laughs> guilty of some of these things. So make sure you watch until the very end just to make sure you aren't doing these little things that are causing breakouts and pores to be much worse than it could be. And we've teamed up again with the beautiful lovely girls over at Wish Trend to do another video on pore care. So make sure to go check them out. Make sure you've subscribed, you've liked, make sure you've followed us on our Instagram. Let's get started. Let's go. <laughs> Over cleansing. This might sound like a really basic one, but it's something that if you are doing, it can cause your pores to get super angry and super inflamed. So the thing with cleansing your face, it's really important to remove all the dirt, the oil, the nasties from the day or after you wake up because mm. you sweat a lot and you, you have oils everywhere. Yeah, when you wake up in the morning. In a nutshell, don't overwash your face to the point where you're stripping your face of its natural oils and making it overly dry. When your skin is naked, it will naturally want to produce a lot more oil. Yeah. So that leads to excess oil and sebum production, which leads to blocked pores and clogged pores, which leads to breakouts. So here's how you can tell if you are over cleansing or over washing your face. If you've used your cleanser, you've patted it dry and you feel really tight. You know when you can't like Toy. move it? Yeah. yeah. That's when all the natural oils have been stripped away and you'll start seeing like dry patches forming mm. really quickly. Instantly. Yeah. But if you are using the right cleanser, then after you pat your face dry, it still should be really comfortable. So the general rule of thumb for washing your face is two times a day, which is in the morning and at night. But if you work out, you can also wash your face after the workout. Mm. Or for some people, you can use some sort of beauty Wipe. toning wipes or micellar water, that also works. And if you have naturally dry skin like me, it's best to avoid products with alcohol in it because it'll just completely <laughs> strip your face of all the moisture. Yeah. So here are some of our favorite hydrating cleansers that are really well suited for any and all skin types. And one's from Drunk Elephant that I really like. It's kind of got this like gooey, bouncy kind of consistency, like a gel, and then you just spread it all over and it slightly froths and then you wash it off and it's still really nice feeling. Same with the Crave Beauty Matcha Hemp Hydrating Cleanser. And the funny thing about that one is it's slightly tingly. Zing! I really love jelly cleansers and I think like not many people have been able to explore that because yeah. the consistency is so interesting, but it's really moisturizing. So we love those. And another brand I've been loving is the Osea Ocean Cleanser. So there's that one and there's also the Mud Cleanser. Mm. So the Mud Cleanser, it's like peppermint hot chocolate on yeah. your face. It smells so good because it's got tea tree in it. Tea tree is really good for inflammation. It's good for acne prone, but it's good for like every skin yeah. type. And it just makes you feel so refreshed. It does. It's like, I'm awake. And then one that we mentioned that we've been really loving is the BioClarity. And it's got chamomile, green tea, and cucumber, all of which are really good for soothing inflamed skin. So these all feel really comfortable and they're not over drying at all. Rinsing off too quickly. So if you're breaking out, you're going to want to steer towards cleansers that have salicylic acid because salicylic acid can penetrate deep into the pores and really like wash away any excess sebum. Yeah, we'll, we'll get that animation there. <laughs> but if it's actually not left on there long enough, it can't do its job. So if you're already using a cleanser that has salicylic acid to help with breakouts and you think it's not working, this could be one. So cleansers need a proper contact time on your skin for them to work their magic. And it's kind of like brushing your teeth. You're not just gonna put on toothpaste and then, you know, rinse and repeat, right? So just make sure you're really working it in there, get a nice lather. Some cleansers aren't as frothy, yeah. but that's fine. It's if, still doing its job. Yeah, if anything, they're more gentle, the ones that don't froth. Another way to make sure that you're not rinsing off too quickly 
usually is to use a facial cleansing brush like this one. There's usually different brush heads for different skin concerns, like the one we've been using from Vanity Planet. There's one for daily use, one for exfoliating, and one that's silicone, which is great for dry and sensitive skin like mine. Its bristles are soft and it's hypoallergenic and non-abrasive, so it cleanses my face thoroughly without it feeling too rough. So I know the cleanser can work its magic properly without being rinsed off too quickly. It also feels like a deeper clean because washing your face with your fingers sometimes doesn't feel like it's helping wash away the dead skin, which can still leave dry flakes after you've cleansed. So this just makes sure that the dull layers have all been properly shed and it helps with all the products that we'll be using after cleansing because the goal is to make sure that each product is doing its job and sinking into the skin. And if you guys are interested, the good people at Vanity Planet are offering 75% off their facial cleansing brushes. Check the link below for that. By the way, this isn't sponsor. We're just sharing some good deals. So some of my favorite salicylic acid cleansers are one from Neutrogena. It's the Pink Grapefruit Oil Free Cleanser. And it's just kind of like a really inexpensive drugstore priced cleanser that you should use if you're breaking out. Another more moisturizing one is from Aveeno. It's the Clear Complexion Cream Cleanser. And as the name suggests, it's more creamy. And then there's also the Mario Badescu Acne Facial Cleanser, as well as the Kate Somerville Eradicate Daily Cleanser Acne Treatment. Now the Kate Somerville doesn't have BHA or salicylic acid, but it does have sulfur. And sulfur is also really good for acne mm -hmm. and oily skin. Not properly moisturizing. So regardless of whether you have oily, combination, dry skin, if you don't moisturize, this is the biggest no, no. You should never reduce the amount of moisturizer that you're actually using because turning your skin into the Sahara is not actually going to help reduce pimples or reduce the size of your pores. I actually used to think this. I was like, <laughs> my skin is so oily and shiny, I don't need to. But that's actually how your skin creates more pimples and your pores become even bigger. So your skin produces oils on its own, especially when it's dry. So if you already have oily skin and you don't moisturize, your skin will actually be pretty using more oils. Yeah. So that's why sometimes even if you do have oily or combo skin, you can still lack hydration. So moisturizer is probably one of the most important steps of our skincare routine. It prevents pores getting overly large and filled with sebum. It slows down aging and it prevents the face from breaking out. So some of my favorite balancing moisturizers for combination and oily skin is the Ole Henriksen <laughs> Balancing Moisturizer. It's got AHA and it's it's really gentle. Using the Claire's Midnight Blue Calming Cream, it's really lightweight and absorbs really quickly. And it's good for calming and soothing the skin for any sort of inflammation. But if you have drier skin, they also have the Rich Moist Soothing Cream. It almost does the same thing as the Midnight Blue. It's just a little richer, so it's better for drier skin types. And then for the summer months, I really love the Origins Ginseng Gel Moisturizer, mm. which is really good because gel absorbs really quickly into the skin. So for me, my favorite right now for this dry, cold New York City weather is the Drunk Elephant Lala Roche. I feel like the Lala Roche is a lot more richer and creamier yeah. for someone who has a dehydrated dry skin. Yeah. And for the summer months, I love Glow Recipes Watermelon Moisturizer. Sun exposure, contrary to what some people may believe, Leave. If you go out in the sun and you have acne, the sun will help. The hyperpigmentation, the scars, everything will just be the same color. <laughs> Maybe my freckles will match my skin if yeah. I go out and <laughs> Yeah, but it doesn't work like that. It just makes your freckles and the hyperpigmentation worse and darker. So the sun not only causes your skin, sun not only causes your skin, causes your skin to produce more oils because it is dry, and more oil means more clogged pores, which means more pimples and more acne and more breakouts. And it also intensifies the coloring and hyper for pigmentation of your skin. But if we are to go out, just make sure we put on SPF and that our skin is nicely protected from the sun on a daily basis. And same for if you have a lot of acne marks, sure, go outside with no makeup, but wear sunscreen. And it's because it's that production of melanin, which is in charge of producing color on your skin, on your eyes, on your hair. Melanin creates color and by the sun like penetrating into it, it deepens it. But on top of that, the sun directly attacks collagen in your skin and collagen is in the dermis layer, which is like the second layer of your skin. And collagen is in charge of making it bouncy, youthful, firm. So you're directly killing off that collagen if you're not protected. So make sure you wear sunscreen. 
Some of our favorites are Crave Beat the Sun slash Beat the Shield. It is so good. The texture is like condensed milk and then it glides on and makes you so glowy. Sometimes when you put on sunscreen, it feels super thick and yeah. like it feels like Filmy. it's clogging your yeah. pores. Not at all, super lightweight and it does what it's supposed to, which I love. Yeah. And that was one of the biggest reasons I very later on started wearing sunscreen because I always thought it would clog my pores. It would leave me looking like a clown. And I think the old school ones were a lot it like does. that. Shiseido Urban Protection, it's like SPF 42. And that also is very lightweight. It's very liquidy. And if you have like more oilier combination skin, I really like the Super Goop. It's almost like a primer. It's like velvet and it's invisible. If you wanna know more about sunscreen, we did an entire video on sunscreen and how it works. Makeup! I think the first thing that you want to do when you are breaking out or you have huge pores is to apply makeup. But we all know that applying foundation is probably one of the worst things that you can do because it's like sealing off your skin from breathing. So the best way to go about it if you are breaking out at the time is to just spot conceal with a concealer and then brush over with a powder. Because no matter how non-comedogenic your foundation is or no matter how oil-free mm -hmm. it is, you're still applying something on top of it. So it is still clogging the pores. You know, Glossier has a stretch concealer. It's really lightweight and it blends in. If you really do have to wear foundation, there are some that have salicylic acid in the foundation to kind of fight off as you're wearing it. The one I've used is the Clinique Acne Foundation and it has salicylic acid. It's also got pretty good coverage and you just use this like any other foundation. There's also the e.l.f. Flawless Acne Fighting Foundation as well as the CoverGirl and Olay Foundation. Or you can try BB Cream and CC Cream. CC Cream is my current favorite because it helps you balance out and evens out your skin tone. Yeah, so redness. The only foundation slash CC Cream that yeah. I wear is the Avorian CC Cream. It's what I'm wearing right now. And is it? I, yeah. Wow! I don't, wear, I don't know how to wear foundation. <laughs> After you just went through all of that, I'm like, oh, I've oh. actually been so lucky in my life. <laughs> but yes, the CC cream is awesome and it does a good job at covering. And we both really like it and they have a lot of kind of different colors as well. Not thoroughly rinsing in the shower. So if you're finding breakouts and pimples on like in your hairline, on your back, on your neck, that generally means you are not washing off shampoos, conditioners, or anything on your body that you should be washing off completely. Mm. So a lot of things like sulfate, silicone, and even heavy moisturizing agents can cause your skin to break out and can clog your skin. So a little tip is when you're in the shower, you wanna make sure you shampoo and condition and then wash your body all over so that you can really thoroughly get rid of any excess stuff yeah. that's still lingering around. And also you wanna wash your face last because once again, like if the shampoo or conditioner is kind of like stuck around your face or anything like that, because you know, it all washes down and then it's just like layered there. Good to know. Yeah. I shampoo, put in conditioner, wash my face, wash my body, rinse off the conditioner. Yeah. And then you're stuck with conditioner all over your body. Let's see. <laughs> so we're learning as we're Helping you guys, <laughs> we're helping ourselves. Switching products too often. I think a thing with us millennials slash younger kids these days, we want things now. So if my serum isn't working or isn't doing the things it claims it's gonna do within one use, I generally just like, mm. oh, you don't work. Yeah. But what I realize is with skincare, if you just constantly switching between products, you're not really fully allowing it time to do what it's supposed to do. Mm. So like a week or two, or maybe even longer that's like a general time frame for how long you should test a product yeah for you to really know if it works or not if not even longer so how to look at this one is to first determine whether it's one of three things first determine what caused the breakout in the first place so was it due to switching up too many products at the same time which caused an allergic reaction or breakout or were you using the same thing and these breakouts just happened so if you've been using the same product and this happened, maybe it's time to try something else because something is happening in your body that needs new products. But if it's because you were switching up too many products, then find out and isolate <laughs> which one it actually was. And if it was a chemical exfoliant, maybe it was that it was too harsh. Or maybe if you're using a new moisturizer, maybe it was too thick because then it clogs your pores and it didn't allow it to breathe. Or maybe you added an oil in and that was too comedogenic and it clogged 
broke your pores and caused you to break out. If you just kind of isolate each one, find out what you're actually doing wrong, then it's actually quite an easy fix and it'll only take a couple of days for the inflammation to slow down. <laughs> know your skin well enough to know when you do need to switch things up. So it's a, as with life, it's like a fine balance between both sides. Yeah, and patience is key. Introduce it one at a time, but also do a patch test just under the neck here. Nobody has time for that. No, but they do. <laughs> Stress. When you're stressed, your body or your immune system creates a chemical called cortisol. So when these one at a time, but also do a through into your bloodstream, the blood vessels begin to dilate, causing your blood pressure to rise as well. And as this stress continues on in your body, your immune system is also constantly pressured and pressed. And so it's also very easy to get sick and things like that. Skincare is hard because you have to find things that work, yeah. but that's a constant process. It's more about like reading into what's happening here and then saying, okay, this works or this doesn't work work and it's fine to adjust and change. So for something like stress, it's a very internal thing and there's a lot of things that we can do for us so that we can be mm. calm and at peace inside. So things like meditating, journaling, what you can fix is yourself and your heart and your brain. The miracle cure. In times where desperate and in need, <laughs> we always want to hear the next best thing like this is going to solve all your problems. And so things like supplements or spot treatments, even though they're really intense, they're still not gonna fix it in a day or two. Yeah. And I think this one is more about like being mindful of what's out there and being marketed to you because there's so many detox teas that are apparently gonna work wonders for your skin. But honestly speaking, if a tea says it's going to banish your breakouts, I say false. It's a lie. No single product can help you cure something. And it kind of goes back to everything that we put on top is just kind of a band-aid. Whereas what really needs to be fixed is your lifestyle, your sleeping habits, your mental, like thinking, mental well-being. Yeah. yeah. Because all of those things are actually the biggest triggers of breaking out and big pores. So if you keep all those in mind, I think you definitely see that your skin starts to even <laughs> Clear out. out. So I think at the core of everything we just talked about, it really is acceptance mm -hmm. of yourself, of like your situation, of your circumstances. Always do your best and work your best at whatever it is that you're doing, but yeah. also know that we're human and that sometimes, you know, if a pimple wants to come out, it's gonna come out. We yeah. all have them. Embrace yourself, accept yourself. And also head over to Wish Trend to watch how to properly extract that pimple of yours in front of that <laughs> mirror properly without leaving nasty like scars because there is a right way, you just gotta know how. So make sure you check out their video on their channel. Make sure you've subscribed and followed us on all our Instagrams. And the like yeah. and the comment. <laughs> and then we'll see you in the next video.